Hey guys, it's Barrett from The Gimme Camper. We had a quick work trip to Orlando between our time in South Dakota and going to Michigan this year to visit family. So we decided to take the camper so that we could do a quick little uh, Disney getaway for a couple of days. And you, by the way, in case you didn't know, this is a very warm thing to do in the summertime. I don't really recommend it all that much, you know, but sometimes you're just in the right place at the right-ish time. We had a couple of weeks notice and you know didn't have a lot of time to prepare so i started looking on campendium you know which is really my go-to if i'm just trying to find a campground near a specific area of interest i ran across a couple of campgrounds you know with availability in the area and while sun outdoors champions gate is a little more of an rv park type place than we usually go because we usually avoid the rv parks you know we gave it a shot there was some construction going on on the road in front of the campground but it wasn't horrible i will say that you know when you first pull in to the park it's a little bit confusing where you're supposed to stop you know because you got to check in at the office there i feel like the sign tells you to stop before the office but then i feel like if you're going to stop there then you're going to block traffic so to me it was kind of nerve-wracking like where do i stop so i pulled up beside the office and stopped nobody said i did it wrong so heck i don't know so this park's actually in davenport florida which is the southern aspect of the orlando area you know it took us about 20 minutes to get to the disney properties from here as long as traffic was okay you know the park does you know split their sites into standard and premium sites one thing to keep in mind is that you can't book a specific site without paying a site lock fee the cost for our site was around fifty dollars a night which included a ten dollar resort fee and we just got the regular uh, sites and not the premium i wasn't actually planning on making a video so i didn't record my sales speeds here but the at&t and verizon service we use was definitely usable but i remember thinking that i would have thought it would actually been better given that we were close to a large city like orlando so let's talk about amenities at the campgrounds. You know, the, the amenities include a bathhouse, which they call a comfort station. You know, I will say that the inside was a lot nicer than I expected based on what the outside looked like. You know, there's also a pool. The pool's kind of small, but it, it appeared nice and clean. And the website actually does note that the pool is heated as well. You know, they also have a large outdoor fire pit, horseshoes, and other outdoor activities that I noticed along the way too, but we didn't spend much time there because we were just using it to sleep, basically. I did notice that while we were there that they you know, started doing some upgrades and they were actually placing some pavers at some of the sites as well. Let's talk about some negative aspects to the campground because, you know, every place has its negatives. And one thing, like I say, is this is more like an RV park than we typically like to do. We typically like to go for more of the campground feel. The largest problem that I had with the site that we were given is the fact that instead of gravel, it was actually shells, which is fine. However, it wasn't compacted very well at all. So I tried the curve levelers. They just sank right down into those shells completely. And this is the exact reason though that I do keep the uh, block style levelers in the camper with me in case I need them though. It doesn't look too off level when you're just looking at it, but there is a pretty decent slope going all the way down this path. So because of the slope, it does lose a few inches on the uh, side that goes down the hill. And some of the sites behind me were actually paved with pads. And, you know, I've never really had an issue with gravel or anything. I don't care if my pads concrete or not, but those shells, I didn't like them because they weren't compacted very well at all, like I said. You know, I wasn't actually sure where I was supposed to park at in our site either. You know, I wasn't real sure where we were supposed to park at at our site as well because if we parked right where the number and the utilities were, then we'd be right up against our neighbor with our front door. And the sites are decently wide, so I did leave enough space in the room between me and the neighbor to park my truck. And that's the way that kind of everybody seemed to be laid out, even though you were kind of further away from the utilities. 
So I did have to use an extension cord on my power plug. When I did get the power plugged in, the plug at the main pedestal didn't work. However, there was an additional 50 amp plug a little bit closer to the camper, which did work. So that one kind of confused me a little bit. The water was also all the way on the other side of the camper in the sewer as well. So, you know, I believe that that was the one I was supposed to use. But again, it's uphill from where the camper was and it's a few inches that you have to go up the hill and then over the pipe and so you know we just used our tanks because we were only there for the weekend and then we dumped at the sewer that was a little bit down the hill which i think is actually for the neighbor site before we left but even then that sewer pipe was still coming out of the ground you had to kind of go up and over that to, to dump the sewer so as far as preferred sites, I didn't really search out preferred sites as they appear they have a lot of seasonal campers here and I couldn't tell if these are supposed to be in a certain area or not because they were kind of spread out. I usually don't mind gravel sites, but like I say, you know, I would maybe ask for a paved site here due to the leveling issues that we had. All in all, you know, if you're just looking for somewhere to park while going to do some activities, going to Disney, you know, it's, it's not too bad of a bargain. And I would stay here again if I needed to. You know, I kind of want to stay at the Disney property, but I just can't spend $150 on a camp site. I, just, I can't do it. I'll probably end up doing it eventually for you guys just to share my experience, but I don't know. I just can't. I'm too cheap. You know, I know this isn't as thorough of a review as I usually do, but I wasn't really planning on it. You know, so we didn't really stay in the park much at all. However, I figured I'd share my limited experience with you. Maybe it'll help you out if you're interested in staying in the area and you're looking for somewhere to stay. So guys, thanks for joining our family. Thanks for watching the video. Hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you next week. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.